This is a 1997 Ford F-250 with a 7.3 liter diesel engine. You will never find one of these pickups with over 400,000 miles on it. Not because the engine is not capable of it, the engine is totally capable of that kind of mileage and far above that. But the odometer resets at 400,000 miles back down to 300,000 miles. So you'll never see that over 400,000 miles. How do folks you're watching Deuce and today I'm gonna to change the oil in my 1997 F-250 that has the iconic 7.3 liter diesel engine. And before I add new oil back into the engine, I'm gonna take my new Fancy Pants Boroscope, go inside there and show you what a 28 year old, well-maintained 210,000 mile 7.3 liter diesel engine looks like. As far as boroscopes go, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen. Take a look at that. You can give yourself colonoscopies. You can do all kinds of things with that. She's still dripping a little bit, but I'm tired of waiting. So we're gonna go ahead and shove the probe in there and we're gonna see what she looks like. Oh, there's a pickup tube. All right, there is a connecting rod right there. Unfortunately, I do have oil on the lens. Now that's upsetting. I did not expect the oil pickup tube to be that close to the drain plug. I have now completed the oil change on the 7.3 liter diesel engine. Now I started pouring that oil in. I thought, you know what? I have never looked in this head because the valve covers have not come off. This engine is pretty much bone stock as it came from the factory. I have made some repairs as needed, but that is it. So I think this is a great opportunity to take out the old borescope here and take a look at what the head looks like. Is it sludged up? Is it not sludged up? I have been very diligent in doing my oil changes at between three and 5,000 miles. And I think using this little guy should tell me what happens after 200,000 miles of diligent oil changes using Rotella. So let's go ahead and take a little peek right there. Oh, let me record. To record, you just hold down this button right here and she starts recording. Sweet. So let's go ahead and go inside the valve cover there and point it toward the front of the engine. Wish I had a little bit more of a wide angle lens there, but there are the valve springs right there. And I don't see a bit of sludge. Look at that. Look at how clean that engine is. Holy crap. That, um, that is proof that Diligent oil changes and using the, the right oil, AKA Rotella for diesel engines is the right way to go. So 200,000 miles, not a bit of sludge in there. I am very impressed. There is one thing I do want to check out and that is the valley in this V8 because the 7.3 liter diesel engine is a V8 configuration, which means there's a valley right here where this turbo is. There's a valley underneath there that can collect diesel if there is a leak. Here's the diesel fuel filter, and I had a leak. I think it was just the filter lid itself. I got a new lid for my filter here, and I think that's it, but there are some other possibilities of leaks down here. I also wanna check out the fuel pump. The fuel pump sits right here. It's a mechanical fuel pump. This last year of the mechanical fuel pumps. I changed it out like six or seven years ago, and I'd like to see if maybe that's leaking because there are some hoses that goes to it. The outside of the engine looks way more sludged up than the inside of the engine. <laughs> there is the, there's the drain tube right there, which can be an issue there. And it looks like that has been leaking somewhat. I don't really see any pulled diesel down there, which is good. That's, that's definitely now it's sludged up because that has been filled with diesel before. So there's debris down there. Now I'm not going to pretend like this is not a used engine it is definitely used so she's she's been there she's seen that she's been road hard and put up wet is that a snap ring that might be a snap ring from my uh fuel pump let's take a look at the fuel pump here if you reach way back underneath the turbo and then point the camera toward you there is the fuel pump underneath the turbo and that big nut right there that is a pain in the butt to get tightened without taking off the turbo I managed to do it, but it is not, it is not easy. I now have the magnet on the end of the camera there. So let's see if we can snag that snap ring back there. No reason to do this. It's not hurting anything being back there. It's trying, <laughs> but it's, it's embedded in, it's embedded in junk. I'm assuming that it is magnetic. It may not be. And now we have old Captain Hook here to try to hook that snap ring. 
Again, it's not hurting anything, but you know, why not? I'm honestly embarrassed by how much time I wasted trying to get this stupid thing. This is after about a 20 minute ordeal. Oh, I got it. I got it. I don't know why I'm whispering. Careful. And there she is. That was a little bit of an adventure and it turns out it's not even a snap ring. It was a seal for the old fuel pump and it's not even magnetic. That's why I couldn't grab it with a magnet, but I did pick up a ton of debris. So what is this boroscope good for? Well, one thing it's good for is automotive applications and lawnmower applications, anything where you need to stick this down a tube to investigate what's going on down there, say a spark plug hole. We've already shown that right there and it is very successful for that. It's also good for plumbing applications. I have a deep sink here in the bunker and I bought this bunker from an eccentric artist. Uh, he was a very odd guy. Basically, imagine a dark hair dyed Mr. Miyagi. That's who I bought this bunker from. And I've always wondered if there was something weird down in the trap of the deep sink. Turns out it's not. And it was a big bust, unfortunately. There was nothing down there except for a few stainless steel tumbling pins from my case cleaning operations. What it is not good for is firearms because it wasn't designed for firearms and it doesn't really work for firearms unfortunately because the articulation just takes up too much room and it makes this end here the camera although very high quality uh, too large to fit in the majority of firearms especially rifles which is the type of firearm you'd want to be using a boroscope on so you can take a look right there of my latest shotgun and you can even use the articulation a little bit and look around just a little bit there of course a shotgun is not oh there's the uh, there's the gas port so I guess I could, wait, oh yeah, I have three gas ports. I forgot <laughs> this model has three gas ports on it. It will barely fit down a nine millimeter. Here's the famous Yeet Cannon, and you can see the nine millimeter barrel. It is too tight for the articulation to work. So if you try to force it, it would just break the whole action. So you don't want to do that as well. I know this isn't a normal video for the channel, but YouTube does like me to do an occasional non-gun related video and this was mo for the most part non-gun related <laughs> and uh, that really does help out the algorithm i do appreciate if you hit that like button subscribe if you're not subscribed because i will do more diy stuff as well as getting back to my normal channel content if you have any comments questions or a show it is leave that down in the comments down below i try to answer as many of those as possible and if you want to get your own articulating uh boroscope here i will leave a link down there in that first comment i pin a first comment to the very top of the comment section Check that out on all my videos. I always leave some useful information down there. And as always, you guys have a great day. See ya.